Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about something that I've been seeing on YouTube more and more, and that is Kmart America. Now, for those who don't know, Kmart Australia is still alive and well. Like, our Kmart is in no way going under. It is actually probably one of our biggest chains in Australia. So I want to talk about why the Australian market for Kmart is still kicking and still going while the American counterpart that it's based on is going under and I think it's down to one or two stores left in the whole United States. So to understand why Kmart is still around in Australia, we need to look at how, how, much, how much input the American one has in the Australian market. They sold off a lot of their steak back in the 70s from what I can dig up and research. There's some good videos out there on YouTube who you can search down and they go a bit more into the, uh, the, um, the sell-off and how it was quiet and all that. But essentially, since the 70s, what I can make out, that's the last time the American Kmart had any involvement in the Australian Kmart. So, it's basically two different business models. Now, throughout the years, Kmart has kind of solidified itself as a juggernaut for home shopping. Like, it's marketed in a lot of same, the same uh, space as Target. Now, recently they've merged together, so Target, Target's been on life support for a couple of years as well in Australia. Like, Target is around, it's still very much around, but Target has been that weird store where most people will just gravitate towards Kmart. So Target is in that weird space where a lot of their stores are starting to merge into Kmart, and now they, there actually has been a merger. So that's, that's essentially what Kmart and Target operate as, but they both operate under the same banner, which is West Farmers. And for those who aren't aware, West Farmers is a massive company in Australia. It is essentially our supermarket chain that owns Coles. And the Coles, Coles is one of the two biggest supermarket chains in Australia. We have two major supermarkets and they call it a uh, duopoly because between the two supermarkets, they basically control like 90 something percent of the market. They own a huge percent of the market. I don't know if 90 percent is the exact number, but it's huge compared to like Aldi and all these other shops, IGA. So having the Coles group behind it and West Farmers means that they have huge pockets. Like Coles can kind of carry Kmart if it's going through a down period because people are always going to need food. And when I say Coles, it's like you go in there to get your food, you go there to get your general supplies. Like essentially Coles is equivalent to what Woolworths would be in Australia as well. And for those who aren't aware, we have two major supermarket chains that you go get food, you go get your cleaning supplies, your toiletries, all that stuff. That's where you would go to Coles Woolies, your general shopping. Compared to when you'd go to Kmart, Kmart's more for like if you need clothes, Target's for more clothes, a um, bit more like if you want to just pick up like a cable for your iPhone or a case. Um, you could also get little things there like books, like there's little things that Kmart and Target, they share very similar layouts. They also have a small gaming section, but I've seen physical media and gaming section has kind of dwindled away. Came up and got out of it back like 2004, 2005, I remember. They got out of it a long time ago. Actually, no, it would have been, would have been later than that because they had Blu-ray, so it would have been maybe 2010. Target was trying to stick into the physical media until like two years ago, and they had DVD, small, smaller and smaller, got smaller. And then eventually they ended up just, I, I can't even find physical media there anymore. There are some stores that still carry it, but... It's not as it used to be. Gaming especially is big at um, big, uh, Target, but as it merges more into Kmart, I could see them just dropping gaming completely. Obviously they have big toy sections as well. That's why a lot of families would go there to pick up toys for the kids. But when I think of Kmart, it's kind of a staple of Australian culture. Like the way our, our Kmart is marketed in Australia and even our Target, like we have a saying in Australia, we don't call it Target, we call it Target when because he tried to make it a trendy brand back in 2006 or so, and it just stuck with the Australian public. Now a lot of people will say, oh, I'm not wearing Target clothes, I'm wearing Target, because it sounds more fancy. And then if you go to Kmart, the whole thing about Kmart is that it's built to be cheap, it's built to be trendy, it's built to be like, oh, okay, you just want something simple, so we won't put designs on it. Now you can get shirts with designs on them at there, but... A lot of their core um, audience is families, and they will go like, okay, you want a cheaper pair of whatever for the kids, come to Kmart, you can come here. And that's how they market it in Australia. They started going towards a trendy sort of market. And when I think about trendy, it thinks, it's like, 
okay, come to Kmart, you can buy this bowl that has, like, yeah, it looks like a random bowl, but you can do so much with it, and they start showing stuff online. The way Kmart Australia is marketed is very, very smart. Now, we also have to talk about the competition in America is far more fierce. I mean, over there, there's Walmart. I understand there's Walmart, Costco. Now, Costco is trying to break into the Australian market. They're kind of getting, they're kind of getting on a roll, but it's very slow at the moment. They're they're going very cautiously with that. But what works in America doesn't necessarily work in Australia. So it's two different mentalities. Like Australians will buy in bulk. There are families who will buy in bulk, but it's not as much as like America would prioritize something like that. So an Australian might go to Kmart and say, okay, I want to pick up blah, shirt. I want to pick up a new remote for the TV, a universal remote. And Kmart still have a lot of their brands. Their in-house brands are like Anko. Um, and just for so you're fully aware, um, I'm not getting any incentive to talk about Kmart or any of that. I'm just, I just see a lot of my fans are American and I have been watching in the past couple of days how the American Kmarts are going down. And I'm just like, how is this possible? Like, Kmart's a massive thing in Australia, but it's like dwindling away in America. So another big factor that we have to take into account why Australia might have a bit more of an easy time marketing Kmart is A, less competition. Obviously, there are two major companies in terms of, yeah, I mean, look, we have Ikea, we have all these other things, but in terms of the space that they occupy in soup, in um, malls, as you call them, they're shopping centers here, we call them shopping centers. Um, Kmart is usually in every one. Um, it's very rare you'll go to one a shopping center that doesn't have a, ta- a Target or a Kmart. It's very rare. But when you get to things like Okay, supply and keeping supplies up and getting it cheaper to the to the people who shop there. Well, Australia is in very big in Asia, in the Pacific, so obviously Asia is very close to us. We're very close to Asia, and also you know that means we can get stuff from countries like India, like Bangladesh, like China, very easily. It's very close. But when you think about it. That's one small factor. I mean, people will pay more if the quality's there. And that's where they really picked up. Like, obviously, look, you can say what you will about how they manufacture in Asia and how low costs of wages and that. You can talk about the moral dilemmas of that. But the way it's structured is very smart. Like, the American market, obviously, competition from Walmart, I understand. We have a kind of Walmart equivalent in Australia, which is Big W. Um, That's owned by the Woolworths Group. Um, They they have a bit more of your like, they have a bit more of your like games might be there a bit more than like Target or Kmart. So you might be able to go there and get your Nintendo Switch. I bought an Atari there, you know. There's there's a lot of reasons why you go to Big W. They also have a lot more like, they're structured a bit more of like everything, a bit of a general everything. You can go there for car supplies, you can go there for printers, you can go there for anything you can think of, you can probably go to Big W for. And I think that's kind of structured in a way that's like resemblant of Walmart, although Walmart have no say. Although there's color schemes that they use are very similar to what Walmart, to Walmart from what I've seen. Um, You can also talk about, there's little things like, Best Buy's equivalent in Australia might be, um, might be JB Hi-Fi. I mean, JB Hi-Fi is structured very similar to um, Best Buy. Although the good guys are very much like that as well. Good guys as well. Um, Bing Lee is very similar. So we have the, all these shops, but I'd say the closest to Best Buy in terms of having physical media sections is JB Hi-Fi. And that you go there to get your games, you go there to get your electronics, your TV. Harvey Norman as well. Harvey Norman is very massive in Australia. That's probably where a lot of people go to get their uh, TVs and fridges and that. So we have multiple different things in that space occupying, like your utilities, your washing machines, your fridges. There's many different companies that you can buy that I've just mentioned. But I'd say the closest resemblance to Best Buy in America would be uh, JB Hi-Fi. That's the closest I can find from looking at what they sell and looking at what our JB Hi-Fi sells. It's very close. But back to Kmart. Why did Kmart America fail? Like... It seems on paper that the brand, it's, look, a lot of people have nostalgia for Kmart. I grew up going to Kmart, like they used to have their own Australian brands and they would have like AC, Australia's Choice, Coke, and like, you know, they'd have machines at the front of, um, 
at the front of Kmart's back in the day. This is before, this is like late nineties I'm talking about. You could go there and get your drink for like 50 cents and like, it was great back in the day, but you know, they're the things you think of when you go to Kmart. It's been so much a cultural significant shop in so many Australians' life that many Australians still go to Kmart. It's just something we do. And yes, while it's not necessarily targeting like the people going to Woolworths or Coles or like trying to get people to come in and do like their shopping. I mean, Officeworks is definitely around. Officeworks is another shop that sells office supplies. Um, but you know, there's so many different shops. Kmart is more targeting a general audience of like families. Okay, come and get your cooking, your pans and come and get your, come and get your cutlery, come and get your glass and like your glasses and not glasses, but like cups and that, you know, they, they're targeting like kitchen supplies, toilet supplies, like such as towels and stuff like that, like bathroom supplies, um, books, clothes, some workout gear in there, and then generally toys as well, camping gear. There's a lot of things that they target and it's, it's sort of, sort of niched. It's kind of like, it's got a trendy thing of like shopping at Kmart where you get a cheaper price when you go to the counter. Whereas if you were shopping at like one of the big, more um, like Macy's equivalent in Australia would be like Meyer or David Jones. It's more trend, it's more cheaper than if you're shopping at those stores. But if you were like, I'm trying to explain this the best way I can. So it's targeting, Target's trendy, but also Kmart's sort of going towards a different market of families, trying to get the cost down as much as possible while not cheaping out on quality, if that makes sense. And that's why I think Kmart has survived in Australia because it is culturally significant. And you might say, but I grew up going to Kmart in America. Yeah, but also you have to look at the management. Obviously, at the end of the day, business comes down to management. Kmart Australia did very smart marketing, whereas Kmart America, from what I can see, they've kind of filed bankruptcy like two or three times. And as it's went down and down, Australia's stuck around because obviously deep pockets of the Coles group, obviously West Farmers are in there really picking things up. But also it's cheaper. It's cheaper to supply a shop in Australia like Kmart because Asia Pacific. And yeah, I just wanted to make this video because I've been watching a lot of Kmart videos and people on the American sites talking about Australian Kmart and like, oh, Australia still has it alive and well. And I'm just like, yeah, um, is that not the case in America? <laughs> so I'm just like, it's kind of fascinating to me watching American, you like watching videos out of America is talking about, oh, Kmart, the last Kmart store. And oh, they shut down the last major Kmart store. Cause like there's so many different Kmart stores in New South Wales, at least. And then the whole of Australia, there's so many, it's one of the biggest employee employers of people in Australia. I remember some of my earliest experiences of going to Kmart, as I mentioned, the drinks, obviously they used to sell the drinks for very cheap. I also remember the physical media sections and also when they had CRTs on the shelf and like, I remember like going to Kmart has been in so ingrained in so many people's lives in Australia. And you know, back in the day, I remember going there and buying 50 cent, um, I think it was PIMP when that first came out. I think I bought the single from there. They had the single release on CD. Obviously I've, I've long since lost that CD, but like I remember going there and picking up certain purchases and like, this is like 2003, 2004 when he first dropped. So like, I remember that. I remember going in and buying physical media, bags of physical media. I remember there was a three, a three disc one that had different movies. They used to have these compilation box sets in Kmart. And you'd go in there and I bought like, there was uh, Outbreak and Poseidon Adventure and something and something else was in there. But I remember physical media, like one of my earliest experiences buying Blu-ray was at Kmart. And it's just stuck around. Like it has huge staying power, the brand. Now obviously the color schemes that Australia uses are much resemblant of the old Kmart in America. Obviously for some reason in America, they changed the color scheme to a big K with, that was red and just had white Mart in the middle of it. Now we kept the original logo. We kept the big K in white and then the rest of the logo is in blue, like lowercase blue and it's Kmart. It's like the old school 70 ads, 70s ads that I've seen for Kmart in America. We've kept the same logo in Australia. Like it's still the same logo from back then. Same with Target. We've still got the big Target logo, but as I said, I feel Target might be on its way out, or at least when it gets merged, it may it may market itself as Target Kmart or like a dual shop that does both. But I feel like they're not gonna let the sites go because they don't, 
the way that Duopoly operates in Australia, and when I talk about Duopoly, I'm talking about the Woolworths Group and West Farmers. They don't want competition that to come into the Australian market. So of course they're going to say, oh, we just lost, uh, we can't keep supporting Target, but Kmart's doing great. Let's merge them into one and let's keep that side open and then people can have the choice. Now obviously shopping centers that might have two of those, they will keep them separate and they'll keep them as, okay, you have a Target and a Kmart. It's a very weird marketing strategy, but it seems to work in Australia for some reason. Anyways, if you've learned anything from this video, I, it seems a bit educational for me to do, but I've just been watching a lot of Kmart America videos and watching how that has sort of dwindled down and almost, I think it's kind of went under now. It's like down to one shop. Yeah, let me know what you think, because I'm, I'm fascinated by Kmart America. What's some of your experiences as Americans going to Kmart? Um, UK, do you guys have it? Like, there's so many different regions of the world that watch my videos, and I just feel like, I'm so fascinated that Australia has Kmart and America doesn't, and it's based on the American one. So it's kind of fascinating to me that Australia might be the last, and New Zealand, and New Zealand's in there too. Sorry, New Zealand, I will mention you. New Zealand have Kmart as well, have the Australian version of Kmart. So it will survive me in New Zealand as well. But yeah, let me show some of your experiences of going to Kmart and still got a bit of the cold, but let me know what you think. Um, as you can tell, I'm kind of off. <laughs> but yeah, I've been really fascinated by the whole Kmart conversation on YouTube, and I just wanted to make a video just to let you know, Kmart's still alive and well in Australia. And yeah, I, I'm hoping it's gonna stick around for ages to come because it is a really great shop, and it's something that I remember growing up going to. And look, the longer you can keep some of these stores around, like obviously everyone knows as, as shopping goes more online, it's going to be a lot harder to justify a huge department store like a Kmart or a Target. But it's kind of like a throwback. It, people will still go there to get their clothes and that. Jeez, my, um, yeah, I've, I'm still not great, but, <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, let me know what you think. I have to go because you know, my cold is starting to amp up. Anyways, let me know what you think, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.